This girl danced and made the piper pay. Photoplay, October 1925. Gilda Gray's home at Northport, Long Island is one of the finest examples of colonial architecture in the East. It's a safe bet that the early settlers who built it never dreamed that it would be occupied by the queen of all Broadway's shimmy dancers, a Polish immigrant girl who eagerly seized the opportunity offered by life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Gilda Gray in her bedroom. Gilda found that colonial furnishings were too cold, so she adopted the modern Viennese. As Mrs. Gil Bogue, she is a pattern of domesticity, a good cook and a capable housewife. Her home, her success, and her new movie contract are visible marks of the force and determination of her unusual and fascinating character. A Day Off Photoplay December 1920 some screen stars go back to the old hometown for their vacations, others go to the nearest fashionable watering place, and some go to Europe, taking several months off with nothing to do but England, France, and Italy. They pose for pictures outside the old curiosity shop in London, or in a park in Paris, or feeding Roman pigeons. But consider the case of Eugene O'Brien. He didn't go to Europe. He didn't even go back to the old hometown. He had to work. He even thought he was in luck when his director told him he could have a day off. Guess what he did with it? He went home. Home is an apartment in Central Park West Manhattan, a place where Gene's books are, and his piano, and his pipe. A good place to be. Meet the Misses. Photo play. October 1920. When Conway Tyrrell's day's work at the studio is done, he comes home to an old-fashioned country home in Chappaqua, New York, named Edencroft after his birthplace in England, where he plays at being a farmer, and Mrs. Tyrrell pretends she's keeping house. She was Adele Rowland, musical comedy star. The Tyrrells wanted a home with no frills. They bought this frame dwelling which boasts a setting of several acres and remodeled it, adding gardens and garage, but retaining its quaint old atmosphere. Polly Drew and Her Home Photoplay, December 1920 to many picture-goers, she will always be just Polly, heroine of those whimsical little domestic comedies she herself used to write and direct. Although since the death of her gifted husband, Mrs. Drew has confined her talents almost entirely to writing and directing, her popularity as an actress has not faded, so that these views of her charming apartment in Park Avenue, Manhattan, have a real and personal interest. This is where Polly lives when, as Mrs. Drew, she is not directing Alice Joyce at the Vitagraph Studios in Brooklyn. It was at Vitagraph, by the way, that Jane Morrow, as she was then known, first appeared in pictures, and first met Sidney Drew. This is a real home, and no wonder, for Polly is her own interior decorator. We see one wall of the long, low library with its real fireplace, its deep chairs, and its rows of books, illustrating the principle that books may be used for decorative purposes. These books, however, all have their pages cut. The gray ceiling and soft Persians give this room a restful air that is further carried out in the subdued lighting effects. Here is a corner of the spacious hall, a hall which has an inviting rather than a formal forbidding aspect. There is a canvas splashed with color above the console of wrought iron and marble. Bright fresh flowers in a Japanese bowl lend a lively atmosphere of welcome. Mrs. Drew's Dining Room Here are successfully combined an almost austere dignity and a luxurious comfort. The wrought iron table legs and the cushioned chairs. The carved wall lights and the soft tan tones of the rugs and walls, a delightful place to dine. A detail of the dining room. Supplemented with two Chinese vases is another of those consoles of wrought iron and marble so much favored by Mrs. Drew. A drawing room that is almost always flooded with sunlight, with four large windows taking up one entire wall, and hangings of bright blue. 
The walls in this room are of a dark tan. The divan and chairs are upholstered in flowered chintz. This is a room of a refreshingly feminine personality. One feels that it has been lived in.